Shalom and welcome. I'm Rivka the Jade Gamer, and let me go ahead and get this taken care of. Alright. And here we go. I'm Rivka the Jade Gamer, and, well, Shabbat Shalom, I'm Rivka the Jade Gamer, and this is Exiled 3rd Edition. Uh, it is a campaign uh, utilizing the 2nd Edition rules, a circle of one, and it is following the story of Drifting Lotus, who is a uh, sidereal uh, exalt of Mercury. Um, and she is training with the, uh, Immaculate Order as a monk. In our last session, let me move myself up here and... Why am I blushing? Why am I blushing? All right, no reason for me to be blushing. All right, so. When we last left off, uh, Shale, an unearth uh, blooded dragonborn, uh, an earth aspect dragon-blooded monk uh, had you know found his way to uh, believe that the monk known as who which is the name given to uh, drifting lotus is a member of the water aspected family Aselsi. how's Aselsi? betrayed the uh, Scarlet Empress, and has been eliminated for the most part. Some still survive, but they're scattered, weakened house, and yeah, people can just kind of... Yeah. So, our good friend Shale put together a militia and, yeah, he is planning an attack against our poor and unfortunate Sidereal. But we need to roll to see if we've, we're going to find any clue for the Amethyst file. Alright, nothing's going to show up. Uh, I need five successes to get my first clue. So the question is... Loom of Fate... How is... Uh, Shale's attack going to uh, come about? So, undulating or shadowy, and magical or late. So, late at night, while who is moving through the uh, temple, the cloister? That is when 
the militia is going to attack. And we're going to say that uh, Shale is off to the side. This team includes about seven individuals. Yeah, seven individuals. They are represented by the one token. You go here. So let's go ahead and see how things go. I want to, uh, hey, 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 yeah, you there. You there and interact. All right, join battle. Nothing special about it. So, there, we're going to give them a battle state, and have them roll their join battle. Okay. They got six, six, they got an initiative of six. I will, just for the sake of this, uh, re-roll that, because now I seem to have it working. Four. And he's going to uh, also join combat. Okay. So let's... No, I could have done that. All right. Well, Shale is not starting off uh, in the fight. He wants to wait. His militia is going to be able to uh, move into close. Let's do this. Because they're using spears. So they can attack, not at, not in close, but they can attack in short range. All right, 
Carry one, natural soak three. So defense one, natural soak three. And that is five withering damage. We are beginning their turn. Cool. All right. So they have, uh, yeah, dealt significant damage to them, which puts me in initiative crash once again. Uh, actually, no, I'm going to spend four motes of uh, essence reflexively. To increase my parry by one, so I have a defense of two for that round. Because that is one of the powers, or it's one of the uh, martial arts charms of the uh, Mantis School. And it is called... The Iron Arm Block. So that is a martial arts charm that she managed to learn. And let's get that for you in there. Kiso is going to move up as well. And when you are attacking against a battle group, it's only decisive attacks. Uh, she's being jumped. They have spears out. So she is going to... Uh, well, she's making an unarmed strike. Their defense was one, and let's see, what was their soak? Five. That is unfortunate. But they are uninjured. His name is Shale. Why does it say new actor? He is just going to continue watching because he is not wanting to get involved just yet. And that moves it to 
is militia. They are going to want to take a step back. They're going to target Kiso again. And they're going to make their attack against her. And she's not going to spin the moats now. So she takes seven points of withering damage. So now she is uh, in initiative crash. So the rules on initiative crash again. to it initiative break no initiative break is what they gained um all right can't use charms and can't make decisive attacks but even a withering attack is considered a decisive against a battle group all right So Kiso is going to move up, and she's going to attempt a withering attack, which basically serves as a decisive attack. But she has better uh, roll. They were defense one, soak three, or soak five. And roll. Okay. So she manages to do uh, five points of damage to them. One, two, three, four, five. They have two more health. Their initiative is not shifted because it's really decisive attack. Uh, and because she only has a three initiative, they still get to go before her. So once again, they take a step away. And they're going to attack her. She's got a one and a three. All right, five points of withering damage. The 
Kiso once again moves in, and she's going to make her attack. And that will be enough to take them out of this fight. Uh, she gains three points of initiative. Which puts her back at positive. But now Shale is going to get involved. Because he is a jerk. But there's an important question. A very important question. Did this fight wake up anybody in the monastery? Or catch the attention of anybody in the monastery? What do you think? What are the chances that it did? Run of the mill? I think it's run of the mill. Okay. Nobody was woken up. That is interesting. So Shale's going to move up. And he is going to attempt to rush. So he makes his rush. Zero successes. I make my rush. So I control. So he's not going to be able to get an attack against me. Uh, so, Shale, what is this about? Who are these people? Do you know them? And, hmm. Does Shale pretend not to? That seems like some that seems like the wise and political moon maneuver to make. So I think that's fairly reasonable. Alright. So he denies having any knowledge of who they are. Uh, and basically tells who to uh, go get one of the mentors. And while she is off doing that, he is going to attempt to get them out of the area. By waking them up. Fairly simple. Not really much to worry about. It's just a difficulty one. And he fails. Alright. When the older monks shows up and sees these armored men with spears, 
and he sees Shale looking them over. There was an attack? I mean, I didn't believe it. I am proud of the two of you for being able to fight them off. Oh, I did Shell begins, but, uh, who? Just kind of. I was very lucky Shell, for Shell to be around. And the militia was taken into custody. There is a test to see if they stick around. Route wall. Oh, okay, that will. They are taken in to be questioned. Triumphal Cry will have a meeting with both Shale and who to learn what he can. And it is decided that uh, it is probably time for, for who to depart. She has learned the basics of martial arts and the beginning of the style. He gifts her with a scroll that describes some of the uh, more advanced techniques and tells her to just send a message if she needs more training. So, Drifting Lotus wanders back trying to find her path. Where did she go? Alright, so she has to find her way to the uh, Heavenly Gate. This seems like a good, very good survival check for her. Difficulty 2. Uh, she will spend one moat to uh, to perceive the gates. One success, so there is some difficulty. How is that difficulty going to present itself? How is that difficulty going to present itself? All right. Yeah, this isn't actually going to be an issue on this side of the uh, gate. Yeah, this is going to uh, be an issue here. Let's see. It is a rustling plant. So let's take a look at our antagonist list. Just in the book. All right. Our 
start there. Yes. Yes, there is. A field guardian. So let's see. So we got who our encounter is going to be with. Now, what is going to be what uh, sets it off? All right. That did not do as it was supposed to. Um, all right. We'll on the attribute to see what kind of thing it's going to require. All right, a willpower. A conflict of will. That sounds... That we need to uh, consider a sorceress working. Because I can do those. I am, in fact, a sorcerer. Sorcerous workings allow characters to permanently reshape the world through their occult skill, enacting blessings, curses, or transformations. Ruining the fertility of a barren field, blah, blah, blah. So. A field guardian within this district Rather, it's a uh, nature guardian, but still. Uh, it's going not insane, but the overgrowth, it's kind of raging. So what I want to do... is to soothe the field guardian's mind. So, our intent is to soothe its mind because it's a spirit. So we need to assign the ambition, finesse, and means.
Right. So ambition is rated on a scale of one to three. Uh So I think that uh Ambition 1. Creator bind magical entities capable of performing mundane household chores, but not much else. So no, let's call this an Ambition 2. So goal number is 10. Alright. Now... Finesse. This is on a scale of 1, 3, or 5, and it is set by the player. So, on a 1, the storyteller determines how everything is working. I am the storyteller and the player. Um, but I'm going to kind of for the most part I'm going to set it at 3 that's yeah I want to set it at 3 uh, Sorcerer's Player comes up with a rough description of how the working plays out in the world which a storyteller can then polish or embellish with catches, quirks, and twists that make the working more interesting and flavorful without undermining the core intent of the working So I'm going to attempt to bind uh, the spirit uh, to assist me when I'm traveling through the area, as opposed to attacking me. Now, the means. Uh, a sorcerer who's mastered an ability that naturally ends up the sorcerer's workings. Uh, I have Floral Fairy, which is somewhat related because it is a plant-based transportation, or a plant-based uh, travel. Um... But... Complementary abilities must have a rating of three or higher. No. Spells. Uh, let's see. Each interval is one week. Um, yeah. I'm willing to take the time on this. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Means of five. Uh, take time for one additional roll to... No, I'm not going to make each one a uh, month. So, Terminus of Five. Goal number is 10. I've got five intervals. And let's see. Difficulty set by the finesse of the working. Okay. So a finesse of three. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, get myself an extra interval, and I will take months. Alright. Three successes, that's good for the first roll. I mean, it could be much, much better. All right. Goal number left is four. Okay, I failed on the uh, penultimate test. So what does a botch on a working do? All right, botching a roll to complete. It doesn't automatically ruin the entire effort. Instead, it adds, not, adds a complication. Uh, I lost my, uh, thing. All right. So we will... Do this, and I'm going to spend willpower. And for this, I'm going to... I can't think of a good way to stunt it. All right. Okay. So I still fail. What happens on a 
failed. Da -da -da. Means beyond the boundaries using a sorceress wonder losing means. All right, so in my attempt to uh, perform this sorceress working, uh, I am going to spend the bonus points that I should have to buy the summon elemental spell and say that I learned that in that time but I did not manage to uh, get my ally and Chandra will retrieve me And we have the next part of our uh, no. next part of our uh, attempt to move along the 10,000 paths. So, add value. Yeah. Let's go ahead and just roll one d six. Actually, one d five because we've already done martial arts training. To see which ability is next on the list. Because along the House of Journeys, Resistance, Ride, Sail, Survival, and Throne. Two, three, four. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. Five uh, skills are taught. All right, so four, which is survival, the ship's wheel. Does Drifting Lotus have any survival charms? No. All right. So, as 
so Chandra decides that it's a good time for us to start learning about a uh, better bit of survival. So where do we want to go? Well, there are the eight directions. That seems like a good place to uh, begin looking. So, rollable tables, direction. Well, let's just start with a roll. To the west. I think it was, yeah. So what is to the west in creation? Not the scavenger lands, I want just the entire map of creation. Let's see. So to the west is actually ocean, for the most part. So that's going to be fun. So it's going to be island hopping. All right. So, it was short, it was brief, but we've got story told, um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining me, I'm going to, uh, be right back and we go, we'll go into, uh, Path of Exiles, uh, thank you for swinging by and thank you for, uh, staying with me if you stay with me. Uh, I'll be back in, you know, a minute or two.